Good evening, folks. A bit deeper dive here on the recent paper about Heinrich events. Anytime someone investigates Heinrich events, it's a good thing, especially when they recognize the repeating cycle and the tossing of Earth into colder periods. But this one also helps us with what we see today. Hopefully, we recall that our position is the next one is coming, and the position of the mainstream is that it's nothing but hot, hot, hot in our future. The precursors to this cooling event are what have been speculated before, rapid ocean warming and weakening Atlantic meridional overturning circulation, also called AMOC. In other words, exactly what we see happening now. The harder it comes on, the more cooling will result as a function of cold freshwater melt. And indeed, this happens about every 6,000 years. This paper doesn't go back far enough to show the other well-known events, but a novice might ask, well, where's the one 6,000 years ago? The answer to that can be found in our video about what we call the Noah event. And no, it was not 4,500 years ago. It was 6,000 years ago. It doesn't show up so well with the normal readings because it's the first one in 100,000 years that happened during an interglacial rather than a glacial period. So it should look different. How different? What happened at that time? Let's go back and take a look at that video. Good evening, folks. We covered this story Sunday, March 19th in the morning show, and a number of emails have come in asking about it. A lot of the focus on this story was how the South Atlantic anomaly is not a permanent feature, but a symptom of the ongoing secular variation. But the questions were about the timeline of the study, the NOAA event I referenced, and the quiet period of the study, specifically asking about the evidence for geomagnetic variation during that NOAA event 6,000 years ago in the period just before the quiet period in the study. Little sneak peeks from our upcoming book. The event 6,000 years ago isn't on the geomagnetic variation list or the Heinrich event list, but it should be. This is a compilation of paleo intensity measurements showing the strength of the field. And the first thing that should jump out is the variability to the curves and to the dating process in general. If this chart extended back a few thousand years more to 12,000 years ago, off to the right, we would see a drop down at the Gothenburg geomagnetic event. And on the left, we see the descent into the modern geomagnetic event. The half cycle at 6,000 years ago is a lesser event, but it's clearly showing up in the records as a dip, even if the dating methods don't agree, never have, and never will. The range covers a broader minimum centered around 6,000 years ago. This matches the volcanic evidence from that period, and also the tropical hydroclimate event, the greenest of the green Saharan episodes, the interglacial version of a Heinrich or Dansgaard Oeschger event, and with the solar forcing to match the cycle in what is now officially called the solar Heinrich bond cycle. The quiet period studied in this paper is the one that immediately followed the NOAA event, and the fact that the quiet began right after the expected NOAA event, speaks further to the lack of quiet during the NOAA event. Remember, they recognize these events at every 6,000 years into the past, but not the one 6,000 years ago. It doesn't look like the previous ones, which happened during glacial conditions, but we can still pick it out when we look at geomagnetism, volcanoes, and global paleoclimate data. This is the NOAA event, the half cycle event 6,000 years ago, and the full cycle setting a new age is what we are awaiting now. Indeed, during an interglacial, the volcanic, magnetic, and tropical hydroclimate events are more pronounced than the effects at the poles because the heating has less ice to melt than it would have had during a glacial cycle. Pretty obvious. For more on this topic and all the things expected to come here in the following years to maybe a couple decades, Look beneath the video in the description box. We've got the Earth Disaster Playlist, and for those who prefer reading, this is a core topic of our latest book. Part 4 of the Observer Supplement is all about what's happening now, how it's not just the Earth but a solar system shift, and how the galaxy and sun act as the hand and the sword inflicting the strike to our planet, where the slow crawl of geology, wind, and water is punctuated by a rapid, cyclical catastrophe. Most of us will be alive for the next one. I'll see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe, everyone.